Good morning, everybody. My name is Amanda James, and I am the Executive Director of the Georgia Gerontology Society. I wanna thank you all for joining us. I know that we still have some folks logging in, but to be respectful of your time, we'll go ahead and get started and allow folks to join in as they're able to. Um, I hope everybody can hear me okay. If you are having any trouble hearing, please type into the chat function. And also, if you have any questions throughout today, please feel free to type those into the chat and we'll address those at the end of the presentation. I'm just making sure that no one is sending me any messages telling me of any issues. I don't see any, so we'll go ahead and get started. So like any nonprofit organization, the work of Georgia Gerontology is focused on our mission and vision. So there's no better place to start than to share that with you in case you're not aware. The Georgia Gerontology Society is a statewide, multidisciplinary, professional network that educates, serves, and advocates for older adults and their families. And our vision is that GGS will be the principal network of educators, professionals, and businesses that serve older adults in Georgia. I'm gonna turn off my video because we've got some fun um, photos and, and other things from throughout our history and I wanna make sure that they remain the focus of today and not me and also because I'll be reading some notes and nobody wants to just see me looking down the whole time. So I did wanna share in case you could see who I was in case we haven't had the pleasure of meeting and I apologize that we won't get to this year at our conference, um, but I'll pop back on at the end to say goodbye. GGS has a board of directors that directs the business of the organization. Our board of directors is elected by our membership and comprises the officers, past president, section and chapter representatives, if applicable, as well as members at large. Um, in terms of employees, I am the one GGS employee and I am part time. Um, but I try to stay as available as I can to you. So whenever you're calling the organization or emailing the administrator email, those do come to me and I will likely be the one that you're communicating with for your needs. So happy to meet you again if we haven't done that in the past. Since 1955, GGS has been a tradition for professionals and aging as a membership organization of people with a common interest. Our primary focus areas are education and training, advocacy, and the promotion of careers in gerontology. We believe very strongly in the power of collaboration to accomplish our goals. Several examples of our partnerships will be provided throughout this presentation. GGS has a rich history, and we'd like to take a little time to hit the highlights of our beginnings. If you're interested in reading a more detailed history of the society, you can find our revised complete history from 1955 through 2015, which was developed for our 60th anniversary. It's available on our documents and reports page on our GGS website, and I've added that link on here as well. The original goals and objectives of the society included promoting the scientific study of the aging process, fostering the development and dissemination of information related to older adults, and affording a common meeting ground for representation of the various scientific fields interested in aging and those responsible for the care and treatment of older adults. Conference themes during this time focused on Georgia's programs for the elderly and opportunities for older Georgians. Other notable successes during this period included the publication of Georgia, a fact book on aging with the assistance of the University of Georgia, and also the publication of aging, a challenge and an opportunity. And GGS also supported the creation of the governor's commission on aging with GGS secretary treasurer, 
Elsie Alvis as its first executive director. During the second and third decades of the society, considerable thought was given to defining the role of the organization, and that resulted in the creation of legislative activity and the awards program. Our annual awards began in 1966 with awards to Dr. Robert Ray and to Elsie Alvis. The John T. Malden Award began in 1968. The awards program named the Elsie Alvis Award in 1981 and the Lewis Newmark Award in 1982. Conference themes focused on federal legislation and services in Georgia in the second decade, and in the third decade, the focus was future planning, interdisciplinary collaboration, economic impact on aging, and healthcare. Advocacy efforts urging state, county, and city governments to support services and research in the second, were the focus of the second decade, and the passage of the Community Care Act in 1982, training and certification of care providers and long-term care facilities, and elimination of mandatory retirement were the focus areas of the third decade. GGS also formed the Georgia Aging Coalition with the Georgia Association of Aging Planners and the Georgia Association of Service Directors in Aging. And a fun fact, for one year in 1968, GGS was known as the Georgia Association on Aging. Throughout the fourth, fifth, and sixth decades, GGS focused on promoting and coordinating its work with other state and national organizations and programs that served older adults, thus creating renewal, growth, and advancement throughout the society. In the fourth decade, we developed collaborative agreements with the American Society on Aging and the National Council on Aging to expand member benefits and also co-sponsored the American Society on Aging Summer Series in Aging in Atlanta in 1994. And yes, we're saying aging a lot today. In the fifth decade, GGS assumed administration of the Senior Advocacy Project to observe the work of the Georgia General Assembly and publish senior issues newsletters and also assisted with annual summit meetings of the Georgia Coalition on Aging and Disabilities. GGS continued to administer the Senior Advocacy Project up until its end in 2014. In the sixth decade, conference partners included Southeast Association of AAAs, the Georgia Older Worker Network, and the National Association of State Units for Aging and Disabilities. Our award and scholarship programs also grew during this time. In the fourth decade, the awards program honored Dr. Robert Ray with a named scholarship award and honored Marietta Suhart with a named award honoring an educator. The scholarship fund established in 1985 and the first annual scholarships were awarded, excuse me, were awarded. In the fifth decade, the awards program honored Dan Hickman with a named case management award and the scholarship fund was vigorously increased and placed under the management of the Community Foundation for Greater Atlanta. The new Virginia Smythe Graduate Scholarship Award was established. The legislative award was renamed the David L. Levine Legislative Award in 2011, and the Graduate Scholarship Award was greatly enhanced by a bequest from Virginia Smythe. And these awards and scholarships continue to today. So where are we now? During the seventh decade, GGS con has continued many of the programs that have contributed to our success throughout the years, as well as adding new opportunities. One of the best ways to discuss the work that we've been doing is to talk about our strategic plan, which our Vice President, Pat Baker, will begin discussing over the next few slides. But I did wanna point out one more significant um, activity that happened during this past decade, and that is the addition of the Kahine Change Agent Award, which began in 2017. And you can see in one of the pictures on this slide, um, Ms. Hine receiving that award. So I'd now like to turn it over to Pat Baker, who will continue talking about our strategic plan process. 
Uh, welcome today. It's good to see all of you um, here today and to be part of this webinar. Um, I'm learning a lot about GGS myself today. Um, I've been a member since I moved to Georgia in 2002. Um, I knew about GGS before I ever even moved here. Um, as I lived in Oklahoma, it was pretty famous across the nation as the oldest um, gerontological society um, at that time, and I think it, it still is today. So um, it's a pleasure to talk to you about the strategic plan. I am going to go ahead and stop my video and as I do this presentation, thank you. Okay, so the strategic plan um, in 2015, um, most recently we began work on a strategic plan. Um, our vision was that by 2020 this year, um, it's hard to believe that time has gone by. Um, GGS will be the principal network of educators, professionals, and businesses that serve older adults in Georgia. And so it, to, as part of this process, GGS conducted an action, action planning sessions that included GGS members as well as others from the community to develop key actions in, for seven areas. Those areas were education and training, visibility, advocacy, workforce development, membership, organizational capacity, and board development. So our um, next slide. Our next, um, the first group um, I'm gonna talk about, so I'm gonna be kind of summarizing these different groups for you, um, is education and training. And uh, we have increased our CEU options um, from social work and certified um, case management to nursing, um, nursing registered dietitians, and we have also tried out nursing home administrators. Um, we've added webinars throughout each year. Um, this year, we've collaborated with the Southern Gerontological Society to provide webinars on older adults and opi opioids, and have also had webinars on dementia-friendly initiatives and caring for caregivers in the faith-based community. Our next webinar will focus on how older adults are coping with the social isolation of COVID-19. And we're developing additional webinars in the fall following our virtual annual conference. So stay tuned for um, that information. We've partnered in the past with, um, and currently with Leading Age Georgia in the Tech and Aging Summits. And we've also partnered with the Department of Aging Services to provide logistical support for a um, dementia summit and several dementia friends or dementia friendly events. Next slide. Workforce development. Um, we have participated in the Older Adult Cabinet, which has highlighted workforce development as a priority. We've partnered with the Thanks Mom and Dad Fund, Leading Age, the Atlanta Regional Commission, and other partners to conduct workforce development workshops. Um, our website includes a page bringing awareness to gerontology careers, and we partnered on the program to provide education on aging careers to um, high school students um, in coordination with Department of Aging Services and DOJ. We started with mentoring at the conference recently, and now we've rolled out a one-year mentorship program for our members. So we're matching members with um, students and other people that are looking to go into the field of aging. Our next group is advocacy. Um, this includes advocacy sessions at our, at our conferences. We always have advocacy sessions at every one of our conferences. Um, we invite also members to submit an issue for GGS to support through COAGE. And then many of our members have been active in the senior week um, at the Capitol. And so you can always find GGS members um, at the Capitol um, advocating for those issues for our seniors. Board development. Um, we, have a, we, we have a nominating committee um, that reviews what is needed and tries to identify gaps 
So we're always trying to find members that are uh, might not know about GGS, even though we've been around a long time. Um, and but we're amazed that still people don't know about us. Um, but we try to find members from all over the state, um, trying to reach reach all the regions of the state, um, see where those gaps are that we've identified in our, our board and, um, and then invite those persons to, um, to be nominated to be on the board of directors. Under membership and visibility, the next slide please. Um, we have um, done a lot with that, um, especially since um, we started working on the strategic plan since in 15. We've developed a new brochure and a website um, you can go to the next slide so you can see that okay so that you'll see the next slide okay you see the new brochure that's in the middle um, and so then we've also um, developed a new website updated our website um, we've surveyed members and researched other organizations and made changes to our membership fees as well as adding additional membership benefits such as the monthly newsletter discount for organizational members to exhibit at the conference, mentorship programs, and then free access to webinars. You'll see there on your right a picture of Jennifer Kraft Morgan and her mentee who is David Milner. Um, and so we have uh, matched members with different people at the conferences as well as um, throughout the year. We begun collecting data on disciplines, represented by different members to determine where to target our membership recruitment efforts. And so if you, um, I really want to just put in a, a statement right now that um, if you um, are not a member or you know of people that and are a member, but you know of people that aren't members, please do encourage them to join the Gerontological Society. Next slide. Going forth with membership. Um, continue with that. Um, we have continued to focus on membership and visibility as one of our main um, focus areas. Some of our current projects include creating a marketing strategy, developing additional opportunities for members, reviewing opportunities for students to become more engaged, and consistently reviewing more um, additional membership benefits. So we're always looking to add to our membership benefits um, for this great organization. Okay, under organizational capacity, um, we continue to add volunteer opportunities and we've developed more internship opportunities. We've reviewed and adjusted our scholarship categories and our reviewing options outside of the conference. We diversified our revenue streams by adding contracts. And as we look into the future, um, the executive committee is planning to meet this year to look at an investment of current um, GGS funds. In new areas of growth, um, this year marks our third contract with the Department of Human Services, where we have assisted on numerous projects, including the Dementia Summit, Dementia Friends Kickoff, and community grants for the promotion of the Dementia Friends um, Friendly Initiatives. Um, GGS is also very active in the Georgia Alzheimer's and Related Disease State Plan um, work group, which is called GARD. And then we've also been um, helping other organizations with their events, such as assisting with CEUs, for the Southern Gerontology Conference at, with Georgia State University and the Disrupting Aging Conference with the University of North Georgia. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Babs Hall, and I am your current Georgia Gerontology Society Board President, and it's a pleasure to have all of you with us today. After hearing about the work that GGS has done over the last 65 years and is continuing to do in Georgia, we hope that you're interested in becoming more involved with us. And if you're not already a member, we hope you'll consider joining today. 
I'm so grateful that the opportunity that Ms. Kay Hine presented me when she nominated me to serve on the board of directors for GGS in 2014. I've made so many memories and so many friends and grown so much personally and professionally over the course of the last six years. If you're a member, we hope you will take the time to volunteer on one of our committees. Our communications and membership committees would benefit from additional volunteers, but if you're interested in another committee, just let us know. We'll be happy to connect you with that group. We also hope you'll consider serving as a mentor to a student or early career professional, as we know that those relationships make such a difference in a young professional's life. Although nominations have ended for this year, be thinking of people who are serving in our awards or who may be an asset to our board. Maybe that someone is you. You can always nominate yourself. Members will be receiving a ballot soon to vote on the new board members. Please be sure to cast your vote and to help us determine the next class of board of directors. We are also working on new volunteer opportunities for members so please stay tuned for more ways that you can get involved. And also let us know if you have suggestions for ways that we can engage our board members. Lastly, you can also find more information on our website or by emailing Ms. Amanda James, our Executive Director at administrator at georgiagerontologysociety.org. Next slide, please. We hope that you will join us for our next webinar on July the 28th. As always, our webinars are free for members as this is one of your member benefits. If you are not a member, you can register for the webinar for $10 or consider joining so that you can get that member benefit. This webinar will be focused on cooped up during COVID-19, how older adults are managing and how we can help. What a valuable, opportunity for learning during this new and challenging time in our society. Next slide, please. Sadly, for the first time in 65 years, we will not be meeting in person, but like any organization that has lasted this long, we have been able to adapt to the circumstances around us. With that being said, we plan to host a virtual conference that will consist of webinars every Tuesday and Thursday from August the 4th, 2020 through October the 1st, 2020. As a thank you for your support, members will be able to participate at no cost. Please visit our conference website to see our other rates and to view the schedule of webinars and also to register for the conference. We hope that you'll also invite your friends and colleagues to consider joining so that they can enjoy this benefit as well. Next slide, please. Lastly, I want to thank you for the opportunity to serve you as your GGS board president for the past two years. It's certainly been a pleasure to work with all of you personally and professionally. And thank you for joining us today and taking the time to be a part of this special celebration webinar with us, honoring our 65 years. Please let us know if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions. And at this time, I will turn it back to our executive director, Amanda James, and we'll entertain any questions or comments that our participants have. All right, sorry about that. I, I realized that it popped up and said, you're still muted. Then I told you all I was muted, but I was still muted, so you couldn't hear me. Um, we're, we're a fun informal group here at GGS, so I'm sure hopefully that y'all have forgive me for that. Um, can everybody hear me now? I'm looking at chat just to make sure that I did in fact unmute myself. Let me know, okay, great. Um, I, I just want to thank Pat and Babs again. I am very lucky that I have the opportunity to work with such wonderful um, officers as part of the GGS board. Our entire board is a, is a honor for me to work with. It makes my job a lot easier and I'm very grateful for 
every one of them. Um, we did have a couple of questions that came in. Um, the first is what opportunities are available for students in gerontology to become more involved with GGS? Um, we have several different options right now and I, we're actually hoping to add some. Um, right now, probably one of the best ways for I mean, for anyone to be involved, obviously, is to join. Um, for students, it's $25 annually, and um, students have the opportunity to take advantage of our mentorship program, which I highly encourage. Um, we fill out a, a form so that we can try to match that student with someone who is working in a field that's of interest to them, and then they work with them throughout the year. Um, Obviously, right now, no in-person meetings. They would just be happening um, on phone calls and via emails, but they try to help guide them and introduce them to other people and help provide some support that way. We encourage our students to participate um, in our annual conference each year by both presenting um, presentations as well as presenting posters. We provide um, a nice gateway to that um, kind of area. So there are a lot of um, conferences that are a little bit more intimidating and so we pr try to provide a really friendly easy way to practice that for students. We also are hoping to start more of a student engagement committee in the future if there are students that are interested in working with us to see additional ways that we can improve and we invite any students that want to be um, on our committees to do so. We also have in the past offered reduced um, registration fees for students if they volunteer at the conference and we've heard that it's been a really great way for them if like they volunteer at the registration desk and other things to meet a lot of people so wonderful networking opportunities there there was um and, and pat i saw your video come on i didn't know if you wanted to add to that or if you were just being ready for other questions well i was just um going to see since we have time i was going to go ahead and, and and talk about all the different workshops that we are offering at the annual conference this year. Is this a good time to do that? I've got the list right here before me. Yeah, let me let me go ahead and answer okay. the, a, a couple of more questions that have come in and then um, that would be wonderful. Um, the next question was what types of professionals are members of GGS? And GGS truly is multidisciplinary. I would, um, and I, we do have the exact percentages, but I don't have them in front of me. So if that's something that you're just really interested in, please email me and I can give you the actual breakdown because we've started tracking that. Um, but I'll say that the majority of our members tend to be from service provider organizations um, as well as government organizations. We have a lot of um, both statewide government officials as well as local folks. And again, those more what we sort of think of as traditional aging network of like area agencies on aging and their partners and senior centers and things of that nature. But we also have a good number of members from other for-profit and community-based organizations, for-profit organizations that serve older adults, medical professionals, um, allied health professionals. We have retirees, we have students, we have academics. Um, we've got a little sprinkling of everything, and I think that that's one of the um, benefits of being a member of GGS is that you are able to network and, and talk to people from multiple silos, from multiple different areas, whereas there may be other organizations where you're only interacting with people who do a job very similar to yours. And so the ability to create collaborations across those silos is, is to me, one of the best benefits of GGS. Um, so I hope that answers that question. And like I said, if you're, if you're just really into the data and you want the specifics, I'd be happy to send those to you if you email me. And then the last is what is the theme of the virtual conference? Um, and since Pat's going to talk about all of our different sessions, Pat, I'll let you talk a little bit more about that. Do you have the theme in front of you or do I need to? No, I don't. Okay. Um, I, um, it's elect to age your way. And then there's another little... <laughs> little piece of that that I need to look up. So while I look that up, because I can pull it up, and I do apologize, I should have it um, memorized off the top of my head, but I've been more focused on, on getting those sessions up and running. So Pat, I'm going to go ahead and let you talk about sessions, and in the meantime, I'll pull that up, and then I'll, I'll talk about it at the end. Okay, so um, as, as she said before, the sessions start on August 4th, 
and they go through October 1st. So I'm just going to read out the titles so that you'll know. And if you haven't registered yet, then, then there might be something you think, oh my gosh, that's really one I want to hear. So uh, the one on October 4th is Vision Without Action is Only a Dream. Um, the one on, uh, on August, uh, um, I'm sorry, that was August 4th. The one on August 6th is Keys to Community Engagement, What Happens When It's No Longer Safe to Drive. The one on August 11th is Intimate Connection and Sexuality in the Context of Dementia Disorders, Benefits, Risks, and the Role Your Own Values Play. The one on August 13th is The Peach State's Dementia Plan, What's on Georgia's Mind. Uh, the one on August 18th is Wisdom Project 2. 2030 promoting meaningful engagement and well-meaning the one on august 20th is building resources for person-centered care in georgia's nursing homes the one on august 25th is why evaluate the importance of evaluation and using data to tell your story the one on august 27th is how to be a super ager the one on September 1st is lifelong neuroplasticity, um, as simple as child's play, but the saying the word certainly isn't. Uh, the one on September 3rd is developing age-friendly healthcare providers to optimize health incomes for older adults. September 8th, your piece of the puzzle, person-centered planning for persons living with dementia. September 10th, learning to listen, service learning in medical education to access, assess um, community needs. September 15th, supported decision-making, autonomy for all. Um, September 17th, supporting struggling caregivers who are caring for family members who have been toxic or abusive. September 22nd, technology and aging um, combined. It's a combined session. Um, September 24th, Nebraska, how to have the good life with dementia. September 29th, providing care, care for the dyad. MCI or early stage Alzheimer's patients and their care partners. And then October 1st, Alzheimer's up close and personal, Alzheimer's and other dementias from the care partner perspective. So we've got just a great lineup of workshops and I hope you will register if you haven't already and decide on which ones you wanna to go to, if not all of them. Okay, Amanda. I'm, I'm unmuting myself again. <laughs> um, I did want to just also let you all know that we will be um, adding in an annual meeting as well as an award ceremony. Those dates are going to be determined. Um, our annual meeting will provide um, kind of an overview of what we've done uh, over the last year. It's, it's one of our requirements as a nonprofit to share that with our members and others who might be interested. And then our award ceremony will just be a fun evening of celebrating our award winners and scholarship recipients and other kind of trying to to have the fun that we can virtually so we'll do, we're going to do what we're able to do there um i apologize you were able to see me pull in that um survey together i did want to share a couple of things um i'm, I'm pulling that up just a couple little fun facts to see if anybody remembers those from earlier in the presentation. So let me see if I can get that to work. Um, and and see if those of you who are on the phone want to answer those two little questions from earlier in our history, just as a fun way to kind of wrap up here as we wait for other questions.
All right, so good job, everybody. Um, our first president was Louis Newmark, and we did change our name for one year to Georgia Associ Association on Aging. So everybody gets a gold star for listening. Um, we appreciate just, you know, taking a, a couple minutes there to just have a little bit of fun. Um, I am going to keep it open in case folks can have additional questions. We did want to leave some time, um, but I wanted to just briefly share my experience with GGS and how I got started and talk to you a little bit about a project that we're trying to do this year and invite those of you who are members to participate. So I'm going to add um, my video back. Hello again. Um, I, my first experience with GGS was when I was in college. I had a profession or professor who invited me to attend um, the GGS annual conference. It was in Savannah that year and my parents live nearby. So it would, wouldn't be a huge cost to me in terms of having to pay for the hotel. The, um, I, I paid the student rate to go attend and was just kind of overwhelmed with all of the different topics and things that we people were doing. I was getting ready to graduate and I was trying to figure out um, where I wanted to fit in. And so I took my resumes and I passed them out to as many people as were willing to take them, which is something I highly encourage students to do. And um, shortly after that, I got a call from Katherine Fowler, who was the director of the Athens Community Council on Aging at that time. And I was living in Athens. I was attending the University of Georgia, go dogs. And she called me to interview for a position and I ended up doing um, starting a different position with ACCA but that was my introduction to the aging network it was because of a connection I made at a GGS conference and so many of the people that I met at that conference I met in a different ways once I started my career in aging and I've just always had sort of a connection to GGS because it really provided a wonderful platform for me as a student and to kind of come around full circle and now be the executive director of GGS and do what I can to try to help students make those connections to start their career has been really humbling and wonderful for me. And so I shared that story on our social media as part of our 65th anniversary. And we've had a couple of other members sort of share why GGS was important to them or what got them interested and started. And I'd like to invite everybody who's on the call today, who's been a member of GGS, whether it's been for a, a year, whether it's been for 20 years, to talk about how many, um, to talk about why it's important to them and how that's helped them in their um, professional lives and their personal lives, just what has GGS meant to you in your experience so that we could share that in our social media. You can share those with me either as a video or if you're not comfortable doing a video, if you want to send a photo of yourself and we can put that along with a quote, we would love to do that. Um, Babs Hall has asked um, if there are other board members, oh, and I'll open that up to any members who want to share those personal experiences now to let me know in the chat and I'll unmute you and give you a couple of minutes to do that. And then while that's happening, Dr. Jennifer Kraft Morgan has asked how many executive directors have we had over the years? And I'm going to look up the answer to that question. So if anyone else um, wants to talk a bit about their experience, let me know. I'll unmute you and I can pull that up. I will say the person who had the position the longest is Walter Coffey, um, who has gone on to do amazing things and is gonna be um, one of our opening keynote speakers this year at our virtual conference and talk about the work that he's doing all over the world. So um, he, he's definitely been a big part of our history. Um, going back for me, um, Abby Cox, who's the director of the Division of Aging Services currently, held the position before me. So again, really great history of folks who are doing amazing things. Um, and we also had Matthew Malock, who has now retired um, and living in South Carolina and um, a little envious of, of, of him being able to you know, be on the beach, but he's definitely earned it. Um, and there were a couple more before Walter, so I'll have to pull out those numbers. Is there anyone who wants to briefly share their experience? Renee said she'll share, so I'm going to unmute you, Renee. All right. 
right. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just want to jump on and give the voice of someone who just joined GTS within the last year. Um, my experience was I am an employee of the Division of Aging Services, which, which is the governmental state unit on aging. And I moved to Georgia just over a year ago from Memphis, Tennessee, and knew nobody in the aging network. And one of my closest coworkers was part of GGS at the time and said, you would be so good for this. I'd really like to nominate you. And that was so touching just to see that, A, that she thought I'd be good enough to be on the board, but also that there was an organization like this that really formed the backbone of aging networks across Georgia, because up until that point, I had only seen the state side. So I will say for anyone who is interested in joining or just hasn't had as much experience in getting to network with people in the aging network, it has been game changing for me to not only attend GGS meetings, but to meet the people that are in GGS meetings, because most of the time, these were people that I emailed all the time, but had never met in person. So GGS was that common link to bring us all together in one room. And you'll probably see, as many others might tell you, that the Aging Network is a very small world. So being someone new in the profession, GGS was absolutely critical to getting me to meet everyone, form those relationships, and we've been able to launch projects because of those. So I highly encourage it, and I appreciate you letting me share. Thank you, Renee. Um, all right, Jennifer, I, I see that you're going to share that. It give me more time. To, <laughs> I'm trying to find the answer. And I, and I knew, I said, you know, with 65 years of history and asking people if they want to share questions, I don't know what questions they'll have and they're going to stump me because I don't know everything. And that's one I probably should have known. So apologize. I don't know. I can get you back to Walter. And then he had it for many years. So I'm still looking, Jen, and I'll let you talk while I keep digging for the answer to your question. Stump the executive director. I didn't mean to stump you. I thought it was an easy question. I apologize um, to add more stress to your day. It, it probably should be if I hadn't been planning the, the virtual conference and other things. That's what I should have been prepared for. So no Sorry, worries. <laughs> I just thought you had aligned that when you um, pulled the, the presentation together. But I just wanted to say that GDS has meant a lot to me um, over the last eight years. I moved from North Carolina to Georgia. Um, to join the Gerontology Institute at Georgia State. And GGS has proven to be a wonderful organization of people who care about older adults in the state of Georgia and um, really bring research into action. And that's always been my passion, trying to figure out how to translate what we know as academics into real life action in ways that actually um, improve the lives of older adults. And the people who work with older adults in the community. And I have found GGS to be a wonderful opportunity for lots of my students. Many of the students that have gone through Georgia State have presented at GGS and had their first presentation experience at GGS. And um, it's been a really wonderful experience for them. And many of them have found their jobs through GGS and continue to through this network. And it's been a really lovely, um, time for me to to be on the board for a couple of times now and um, to be able to make the connections between students who are moving into um, gerontology positions and um, and GGS. So thank you GGS, you've made the last eight years of my life a lot better. Thanks. I realized at that time. <laughs> um, thank you, Jen. Um, is there anybody else who wants to say any words before we wrap up? Um, um, this is Babs. Were you going to talk? I was just going to share real quick a few words um, about what GGS has meant to me, and it, it's been incredible over the past six years that I've been a member. I've actually had the opportunity to work um, for various reasons within six different organizations 
And not all of them were related to aging. Only one of those organizations was solely devoted to aging. Um, but through my time working in the mental health field and now in the developmental disability field, um, I've just found that the relationships and the partnerships that I've built at GGS have just translated into all of these roles. And it's just given me the opportunity to stay connected to uh, my passions in the aging field. And it's just been an invaluable experience. I don't think it's something that you can put a price on. Um, it's just sort of one of those things when you get when you get it, you get it. And um, I'm just so incredibly grateful for, again, those opportunities that presented themselves um, by stepping out of my comfort zone and joining. So I encourage anyone, no matter what field you're in, there is a place for you in GGS, and we hope that you'll you'll join us and be a part of the work that we do. Thank you very okay. much. Um, Pat, did you want to yeah. say a few words? Yeah, thanks. Um, I know I said that before that I've been a member since 2002. Um, that was when we moved to Georgia. Um, and I had heard about GGS before I ever moved to Georgia. Um, and so knew that if I was going to continue in the field of aging, um, which I'd been in for many years before that, um, that I was going to need to find out more about GGS and join GGS. And I think two months after I was here, I went to a GGS conference in Athens and started meeting people. And for the first six years we were here, I was doing contract work. So um, in the field of aging. So it, knowing you know, GGS and, and networking at those annual conferences and and events with GGS was just really helpful for me to really get into the field. Um, and I really have, it has really proved to be invaluable to me. All right, okay. So Jen, I didn't get the answer to your question, but I got some fun beginnings and then I'm gonna put the work back on, on you guys, as, so I don't keep you here all day. Um, we started with executive secretaries back in the 80s. So the first executive secretaries were Louisa Bakken, Sue Nor, and Joan Attaway. Um, and that's as far as into the history I got as others were talking. But I'll bring you back to the fact that we have a complete written history that goes through all, who all of our presidents were, who the various staff have been, the themes of our conferences and where they've been held and all of that is on the documents and reports page of our website. So, um, and as always, if that is something where you do want the answer, I'm happy to keep looking. And if you want to email me, I can send that to you. I know Jennifer was just um, <laughs> trying to think of some, some questions that might be interesting. And I, again, apologize, I didn't know, but um, she said, I need to read the history. Um, and it is actually very fascinating um, if you're just, interested in sort of aging history in Georgia because as GGS has been around so long we've had our um, kind of stamp and a lot of different things that have been going on. Um, as we wrap up I, I just want to say that although um, the work that we've done have changed our focus areas throughout the years have really sort of stayed the same. We've just changed how we've done those things. Instead of um, focusing purely on academics we've um, kind of grown to focus on more um, research to practice and trying to bring those areas together and look at what it means instead of being one of the primary advocacy groups we've recognized the importance of collaborating with other areas that um, are better suited for that work so which is which is georgia council on aging and co-age and so instead of trying to be in competition with that we instead try to provide as much support to their efforts as we can. Um, and so, you know, we, we bring it back to those three primary areas, which is education and training, which we try very hard to do, not just at our annual conference, but through additional events and webinars throughout the year. Advocacy, both, you know, legislative advocacy, but also just advocacy for older adults through policies, through programs, through other things that we support. And lastly, but not, you know, in no order of importance, the promotion of careers in gerontology. We know that workforce development is a huge area of concern. We need to do what we can to get more people 
to take careers in gerontology and support that workforce and we're committed to doing what we can there as well. Um, I hope that GGS stays around for 65 more years and even longer as long as we can and I hope that we continue to adapt and grow and we would welcome any input from those of you on the call, from those of you who watch this later as it is being recorded and will be up on our website. Um, if there are things that you feel like we could be doing better, if there are membership benefits that you would like to see us add, um, please, we'd love to hear from you. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end today so that you can go on to your busy days. And with all of our webinars right now, I'll end with a thank you for the work that you're doing during this epidemic to support older adults and the people that work for them. We know it's been very hard on many of you and we can't thank you enough for your hard work. And we look forward to continuing to see you virtually and hopefully seeing you as soon as we're able to in person. Thank you so much.